Yo, what is going on everybody? Dan Trapter here and welcome back to my tutorial series, Browser Noise. This is tutorial number seven and I just wanna make everything look a little better before we call it quits and then we're done with this project. All right, let's look at this. I don't like that we're drawing points. I mean, it's kind of a cool look, but rather than drawing points, I want to connect those points into a single shape. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go before our for loop and call the function begin shape. And then after the for loop, we will call end shape. These two functions are looking for vertices in between that they can use to connect to them together. So let's go ahead and call vertex and hit the run button and look at that. Okay, we have something kind of <laughs> interesting uh, but it looks weird because when we draw a shape like this, by default, it tries to fill the shape, connecting the first and last vertices of our spectrum array. So let's temporarily get rid of the fill by calling no fill. And let's see what that looks like. Play and oh man, that looks pretty cool. Even though I like how it looks, to be honest, I think I do want the fill there, but it's just that I want it to fill from wherever the noise energy is to the bottom of the canvas. And in order to do that, we're just going to add two more vertices, one at the bottom left-hand corner of the canvas and one on the bottom right-hand corner. And that's gonna be really easy. Below begin shape, we're just going to call vertex and for our X coordinate, it'll be zero because it'll be the left side. And then for the Y coordinate, it'll be height. That'll be the maximum value on the height. Then down below our for loop, but before our end shape, we will call vertex and then width and height as our vertices. And then let's run that, play. And if we look at that, you'll see that we do have a shape that sort of uh, connects from these bottom points and then wraps all the way around. Then we'll just change stroke to fill so that we're initializing the fill to white and then we'll actually get rid of our stroke. And let's see what that looks like. Hit play. Oh my gosh, that looks amazing. Let's check some pink noise out. Look at that and then brown noise. Amazing. Now, when I change the noise type to pink, what I want is for my spectrum fill to be a pink color. And then I, the same thing for white, obviously, only except with white as a color and then brown for brown. This is going to be super easy because we're already receiving a string whenever we change the option in our drop down menu. So we just need to drop down in here and pass in our choose noise dot value into a fill function. And now when I press play, we got white noise, because that's what it's initialized to. Then when I change it to pink, oh yeah, that's perfect. And now brown, this thing is working precisely as desired. We're gonna do one last thing. And this is only because Google recently updated their autoplay policy. They're trying to get rid of autoplaying ads and other similar things that make the internet an annoying and unpleasant place. And their way of doing this is they suspend the audio context of the page when it loads. So it's kind of forcing developers to always create some sort of button or event listener that resumes the audio context when it is pressed. So a user input has to happen in order for sound to happen, if that makes sense. Now, we haven't talked much about the audio context because the P5 sound library kind of abstracts it away for the most part. But this is really easy. I'm just going to drop at the very bottom of the page and call the get audio context function. And I'm going to call the resume method on that. Then we're just going to throw it inside an event listener called touch started like so. 
And then I like to also add a condition to check to see if audio context is running so as to not resume it on every single touch. Okay, we are done with our first browser noise project. I point all the time. I see myself in the monitor and it looks ridiculous. We will soon move on to the next project. However, before we do, I have a huge suggestion. I'm still pointing. If you've been coding along this entire time, typing exactly what I type, I do think that you will have absorbed quite a bit in the process. If you really want to get good though, you do have to start working on your own projects so that you get into the practice of problem solving, looking things up in the API, and actually engineering the thing yourself. Here's what I recommend you work on before the next project. It's a challenge. Here's your challenge. Make an oscillator that you can toggle on and off with a single button. Make a drop down menu that'll allow you to switch between the different types of oscillators. Uh, and I'll give you a hint there are four types of oscillators. I'll just tell you what they are they're sine wave, triangle wave, square wave, and sawtooth wave. <laughs> Plot the spectrum of the oscillator on the canvas. And maybe on top of that, perhaps try to uh, draw the waveform by calling the waveform method on the FFT. Then make a volume slider, of course, like we have before, but maybe try to make a pan slider so you can pan between the two uh, speakers. Or, and, you can make a slider to adjust the frequency. And if you're going to do that, I do recommend you use uh, P5's, the P5 sound library MIDI to freq helper function. So it's just going to convert the MIDI numbers that you might want to input so that you don't have to do any logarithms or anything like that. Um, also, just try to make the thing look better. Mine kind of looks, it's okay, but it's a little boring to be honest. So feel free to post your P5 sketches in the comment section below. I'd love to check them out. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next one later. Still pointing. <laughs>